Good evening. Please take your hymnal. Turn to 104. Abide with me. 104. Would you please stand with me as we sing? <clears throat> Abide with me. Let's compromise. 
Let's meet in the middle. No. Now when we are talking about the Word of God, now when we are talking about those things where God has said, stand. When God says stand, we stand. Uh, because what? There should be no second option. There should be no place of compromise. Because to compromise one step from the stand that God has given us, again, moves us then towards sin. It moves us away from separation from this world. Standing where God would have us to stand and being committed to the doctrine of separation taught in the Word of God, they're, 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 they're connected at the hip. Uh, we must, if we are going to be those uh, who take a strong biblical position, and I repeat biblical position, uh, then we're going to have to learn to do these things. Psalm 40 is where we'll begin. I would just walk down and take a look at five, six things tonight, and then we'll get prayer requests. But here in Psalm chapter 40, just verses 1 through 3. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And this is a psalm of David, by the way. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry, and brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Now listen, when we see these things, when God calls us to be established, and, and David here, I waited patiently. What does that mean? He, he, he begins this with, I waited patiently, I'm standing. I'm waiting on God. I'm not moving any other direction. I wait patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry and brought me up out of a horrible pit and the miry clay and did what set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Listen, that is what God does for us when we stand. It is what God does for us, as he as is said here, I waited for the Lord. Listen, when we find ourselves in a situation, as I have done many times, I'm sure you have also, we're at a situation, we're at a place, maybe even being challenged. And what do we need to know, number one? What does God want me to do? And once we then establish what God wants me to do, then stand. Remain immovable concerning the things of God. When we stand on the rock, which is the Lord, our feet are on safe ground. It's when we start moving one way or the other, and we find ourselves rather on safe ground, we find ourselves on the slippery slope. And once we get there, and I know I've probably shared this before, but the area I grew up in, along some of the creeks, uh, there was this gray, slimy clay. It was the most slippery stuff, you, you know, just, I've heard about red clay down south, where I was, it was gray clay. But you didn't run into it very often. And it would just be in just, sometimes it made no, no bigger spot than that piano. But you'd be walking along the creek, you know, looking for fish, or doing whatever, maybe we were frogging, and you walk on, and all of a sudden you hit that, and you were in the creek. There was no turning back, there was no stopping, you had taken one step, what? Too far. And you were gone. And, and listen, God wants us to do what? Stand. He wants us to say, there are times I need to wait patiently because I don't know. I'm unsure as to the direction God wants me to go. And so in that position of, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't know. Then what do you do? I guess I'll just have to go this way. No, you stand, you wait, you pray, you read, you study, uh, you get good Christian counseling, whatever it takes until you come to that place that you know which way you're supposed to go. And, and then we move forward. Uh, turn to Romans chapter.
In Romans chapter 5, again, I'm going to just read verses 1 through 3 of chapter 5 here. It gets, these are basically the results of, of justification. But therefore, being justified how? By faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work of patience. So Paul here, as he is leading in, uh, again, to the results of justification, what does justification, being made just by God because of my salvation through Jesus Christ? And so what does that accomplish in my life? Well, therefore, being justified, how do I get justified? By faith. And so we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This, again, is one of those salvation maps. How, how, how do I do this? Well, you do this by faith. How do you get saved? By faith. Well, faith, where? Well, we have peace with God but through our Lord Jesus Christ. My salvation brings me to a place of peace with God the Father. But I cannot get there unless I go through Jesus Christ. Once that has been done, and again, speaking of Jesus Christ, by whom, Christ, also we have access Again, by faith, into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in, the, in hope of the glory of God. Boy, listen, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he is the only way to salvation. I believe that when I come to him in repentance of my sin and receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, by faith, I believe that this is eternal because that's what the Bible tells me. I have what? It's everlasting. It's eternal. It is this wonderful, glorious, never-ending relationship with God the Father. And again, what? Through Jesus Christ. So I'm justified. So many of you, know, we look at that so I'll say, well, just as if I'd never sinned. We are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace. Listen, we have access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to the throne of what? Grace. Okay, to the throne of grace at the throne of God. What a wonderful thing that God has done for us, giving us access to God the Father all the time. I don't have to go through anybody. I don't, nobody comes to me, if you will, trying to reach God. Uh, if they do, I point them to God. Uh, they can't go through me to, to get there. Uh, the priests can't do that. Uh, nobody can do that. It is simply our relationship and access that we have to God through Jesus Christ, not through any man. Nowhere in the word of God is it taught that we have access to God through a man other than the God-man, Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the only access that we have. And so when we stand in grace, and that is my standing in grace is my standing in salvation. When I stand in grace, our approach to God is an approach with confidence. I know. I can go to God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, he will never turn me away, never. And when I, with a repentant heart, go before God and ask forgiveness for my sin, he forgives me. Amen. The Bible says not only does he forgive me, but he forgives and does what? Forget. Forgets. Now, the people around me don't forget, okay? Uh, you know, when, when we have uh, done something and the people around us know, I can go to God and he will forgive and forget. Uh, the people around us don't forget. It's why we have to be so very careful about our testimony. Listen, when we do something that blemishes our testimony or it loses our testimony before men, uh, my, listen, it is very, very difficult to regain that testimony. 
and I can think back a number of years ago, and I was working in a, in a body shop, and I don't remember, couldn't tell you now what happened, all I remember is I got really mad. Well, the guys that I worked with all knew that I, I was a believer, I went to church, I, I was the guy who left tracks laying around here and there. Um, and I'll tell you what, I, I just felt so terrible about that. I went back the next day, and at break time when everybody was in the break room, I just went in and I said, guys, I said, I know you all heard me, I got really mad yesterday. And I want you to know that's very much out of character for me. And I'm very sorry. And they said, well, you know, what are you sorry about? You weren't mad at any of us. You know, and I was just mad at something that happened. I wasn't mad at somebody. And I said, no, that's not the point. I said, you know full well that I have a testimony that I'm saved. I go to church, you know, I, you know, I want to have a testimony before you guys. I lost it by losing my temper yesterday. And I'm just asking you to forgive me. Um, listen, we can lose that testimony. And, and we need to be very, very careful. I think the, the one thing about that was those guys, it was kind of like, we don't see any big deal. <laughs> well, that's because that's what they would have done. And they wouldn't have apologized because they wouldn't have seen a, a problem with losing their temper. But as a believer, that's a problem. And that goes more towards testimony. Even though they didn't see the problem, when I said it's a problem to me, this is a problem of the heart. This is a problem between me and my God. That helped to establish, again, my clear relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we need to be very, very careful, again, about our testimony. When we stand in grace, our approach, we can approach God with absolute confidence about anything and receive forgiveness, and he forgets. But again, the people around us don't forget. And uh, just we always we must keep that in mind. But also, look at this matter of stand. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, picking up verse 11 of chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take on the shield of faith, wherewith ye, uh, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. How do we strengthen ourselves? And how do we take on this armor? And how do we stand as this repeats over and over in these just few short verses? The Word of God. And when we look at these things and we get to the end in verse 17, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Listen, when we pick up that sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, the Bible, it has the answers. It has the directives for us. When I am unsure, where should I, what should I do? Where should I go? How should I stand? The answer's in the book. And so we must turn to the Word of God that we would know when and where to stand. And it is always a stand for what? For God and for truth. And so as, again, just walking through all those things, when we stand in the armor of God, we can withstand the assaults of our spiritual enemies. And our spiritual enemies are many, and they're all about us. And so again, whether it's demonic, and, and, or whether it's satanic, uh, whether it is our own flesh, <coughs> excuse me, tempting us, no matter what it is, we constantly are dealing, again, with the spiritual enemy. Uh, Acts chapter 5. Acts 
in Acts chapter 5. We're going to look at, at several, we're just going to kind of hopscotch uh, through here, or, or, or else I was going to have to read about the whole chapter. And, and so uh, I just want to take a look here at this matter. When we stand against the threats and the persecutions of this world, it must be in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to take a look here in verse 5. Start in verse 17 of verse 5. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is uh, the sect and Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Now the apostles are in prison. And, and so, again, just, just walk along with that in mind. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. But the angel of the Lord, by night, opened the prison doors and brought them forth uh, and said... Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Why were they just put in prison? For preaching the word. For, for preaching the word. And so now they're released from prison. And, and this is interesting uh, because when they were, well, just, just, we'll, we'll get that in just a second. Go down to verse 28. Um, well, no, no that's, that's part of what I'm skipping. Let me make What happens is they're released. And the great thing there is, you know, others were released and, you know, everything shook and their, their shackles fell off and the guard knew and, you know, all the other prisoners knew. Here they just simply disappear from the prison. They're, they're, they're just not there. They send for them. They're just gone. We, we, we went. They weren't there. Um, and so where do they find them? Verse 28. Saying, did not we straightly command you? that ye should not teach in this name. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew, and hanged on a tree. Mm -hmm. And now continue. Uh, look at verse 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the quick where they just testified to the Jews that they, they are the ones who crucified Jesus Christ. His blood is on their hands, if you will. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Wow. Now, what do they want to do? They want to kill them now. They, first, they want to put them in prison. They wanted to shut them up. Now they want to kill them. And so they go on to verse 42. I mean, does this stop them? No. You go on to verse 42. And daily in the temple... And in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. This is when we walk through this chapter. We see what standing for God is all about. Absolutely nothing would deter them from that which God had called them to do, which was preach the gospel. They're just out preaching the gospel. Beat, arrest them and beat them up. Throw them in prison. In the morning, they're not there. We, we, we don't know what happened. They're, they're just not there. Well, where did they go? Oh, by the way, and somebody comes in. Uh, they're preaching. And they take on, they warn them. And what do they do? They're preaching. And at the end of the chapter, what are they doing? And the daily, in the temple. They, they weren't even afraid. That, you know, okay, listen, okay, let, let's not get off at the temple. We'll, we'll, we'll go house to house. We'll, we'll go down at the marketplace. We'll go someplace else. Oh, no. Daily, in the temple, and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Listen, they stood. And they understood that when they did that, it must be in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 32, just back up. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Listen, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. And we are given through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit to obey God. We will stand. Whatever God has called us to, whatever he has called you to, listen, what we need to do is Know where God wants me, what God wants me to do, and stand. Missionary I met when I first came up here. Been out in the village for a long time. And uh, I mean, he had faced a lot of abuse.
couple of minutes, trying to minister in a couple of small villages, and he just stood. He just kept going, preaching, teaching. So very, very little uh, as as human idea of success. But he was where God wanted him. And he stayed. And he stood. And he taught. And he preached. And he stayed. Why? Because I know this is where God wants me. If God doesn't want me here, he'll let me know. <laughs> and, when, and there came a time. It got time, time to move. Time to do something else. Uh, but he stayed years and years. He stayed. Turn to Philippians chapter. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1, just very simply. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved, you that I love. What, what advice is he going to give to these, and again, the way that he writes this, he is simply in love with these believers. And he wants anyone who's in truly, truly in love with a person or a group, uh, listen, they want what? The very best. Therefore, my, my brethren, dearly beloved, long for my joy and crown to stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. What, what, what does he tell them? Stand fast in the Lord. What's he say? Don't be moved. Stand. Know where God wants you and stay there. And then lastly, Romans chapter 14. In Romans chapter 14, verse 4. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or, or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Listen, no, no matter what, listen, when we're the servants of God, no matter what, it is God who makes us to stand. It is not in our strength. It can never be in our strength. It is in the strength of God. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? Again, that's a great lesson aside from what we're looking at right now. You know, so often we will look at, and I had to learn this lesson after I became a pastor. Because you, you become a pastor, you start knowing other pastors. And, and you, you get to know them, and I'm talking about other Baptist preachers. And pretty soon, you know, do you know what, I mean, I'm going home. You know, Diane was getting most of it. Do you know what they're doing? I can't believe it. I, like, you're supposed to be an independent fundamental Baptist church, and, you know, and I'd be telling her about what this other preacher's doing. And, and you know, it, I find myself doing that all the time. And, and then I was preaching through here one day. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. It's none of my business. I'm a servant of God right here. This is where God wants me. I have to trust in God. I have to stand in, in that which he has given to me to do and therefore stand. The preachers in some of the other churches, they're not my servant. They're God's servants. What they do is none of my business. I mean, what I do, I'm sure that they do the same thing. They look at me and go, Brother Birch is doing? Why? Because I, I'm not doing what they're doing. And so what? If, they're not, if I'm not doing what they're doing or vice versa, there obviously has to be a problem, right? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, God leads us in different directions to accomplish different things. And it took me a while to figure all that out. Uh, but again, this light came on uh, early on in my ministry when I was still in Michigan. But this reality, who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. Listen, when we're the servants of God, we can absolutely trust God to give us the place, to give us the wisdom to simply stand. Do 
what God's called you to do. And, and no matter what anybody else has to say about it, you do what God wants you to do. You take that position. You stay strong. You stand. And you allow God to hold you up. You know, the, sometimes and many times, probably, the situation begins to deteriorate when I'm where I believe God wants me to be and I'm getting people's opinions that this is not where I need to be. And pretty soon, maybe what? Maybe they're right. Well, wait a minute. Allow God to hold you up. Let God take care of you. Be sure that you're in his will and you stand where he has called you to be until he calls you to someplace else. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this time. Uh, we just pray that we truly, that we will stand and when and where we're to stand. We can know this through prayer and through the word. And Heavenly Father, God, when, when you say stand, help us to simply stand. God, we'll thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.